coming right there. All right, you guys like knives? I like knives. Everybody loves knives. I'm going to let Randy get into his favorite cutting tools right after we give a shout out to our sponsor. This week, I want to thank Nutrient Survival. All right, hey guys, welcome back. I'm here with Randy Rawhide Worst from Worst Case Scenario Survival School. Randy is one of my personal heroes. Uh, literally wrote the book on survival. Uh, just, just outstanding, legendary Green Beret. But when it comes to old school out in the woods, you grew up in where? Wyoming? Wyoming. Some crazy shit like that? Yep. Half Indian, whole Indian? Yeah. Uh, my Indian? grandfather's from the reservation. So I don't so know you're what half that meant. Indian. Yeah, quarter. Quarter? Yeah. Top like quarter, that. bottom quarter. <laughs> right. right. Um, but he grew up literally in a family where your dad made you do some crazy survival yes. stuff. That's yes, another yes. video. Another video. Um, but Randy has the survival background. He's not just regurgitating stuff that he's seen on the internet like a lot of other channels do. He's not going to just regurgitate the marketing points that a lot of different knives put out that other people on the internet just regurgitate. What I asked Randy to do is, hey, we're not pimping a particular brand of knife. Tell us why these are your favorite. Okay. Where do you want to start? Uh, first of all, stuff, I don't have any of my fighting knives here. Uh, there are most, some of the most outstanding knives I own are on that. That's another video that we'll have to do. Okay. So you're not going to see that. And I have over 50 knives, but of the knives, the cutting tools that I use the most, you're seeing them here. That's why I picked just these. Okay. Um, let's start with in the civilian mode. One, you already saw this one, right? It's just my small one. It's made by uh, Kershaw. It's in my pocket. I do all kinds of little <laughs> stuff with it. It, but it, it comes it's in handy. It's a bottle opener, dude, with a yep. little screwdriver. And, yep, and you push stuff. It's just a handy little thing you have in your pocket, and you don't even know that it's I mean, there. That's actually pretty solidly built. It's got a liner lock on yep. it. All right, okay. I'll buy that for a doll. That, that's so cool. that, that goes back in my pocket. When I'm in civilian clothes, civilian clothes, then there are several different types of knives that I'll have. Now, this one is one of my favorites, the Sierra KT. This can be hid well, and it opens really easy. And it, the way it's designed with this notching here, keeps my finger from coming forward, which is okay. important. Because this is, if I don't use this to cut a steak with, I'm using it to stick somebody with. I have okay. no doubt that your poor spouse has had to sit next to you in some restaurant somewhere and you've cut steak with them. Yes, yes. I, I don't doubt That's that. how I justify I, having I, I, it. There you go. I, I okay. got it. I got it. So it's very Razor sharp uh, fillet knife almost. Yes. Yeah? And okay. uh, it hides well. Uh, if I want a bigger one that carrying in my pocket, uh, I like cold steel. This is, if you handle this sucker, that is um, like, I could probably climb, a, it, climb ice and stick it in the ice and claw myself it's very, up uh, Very, very solid indeed. Yeah. Um, and I, I can tell, wow, literally, you have sharpened this knife a lot. You've got a lot yeah. of miles on this thing. Yeah, I've had that lot, for about 20 years. A lot years. of miles. Now, guys, uh, one thing I will say is it's, insanely cleaner than my <laughs> knives are. So I know you maintain your stuff. And uh, How often do you sharpen your knives, Randy? If I'm using them every, every time I use them when I'm home. I, 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 I have try, my sharpeners in the bag back there. Too. I got in the habit of back when, you know, when we were in garrison, I would sharpen my knife every Monday while I was making my espresso before I left to huh? go on the road. So just uh, get in the habit. Keep those, keep those pocket knives sharp. All right, and who makes this one? This is Cold Steel. Cold Steel. This is one that I'll always have on. Um, if this one doesn't need to be seen, this one's on my hip. And this one is another CRKT. Uh, I've cut tons and tons of steaks with it, but it's fast and quick for me to get to. If I'm not cutting steak with it, it will be to defend myself with. All right, now you mentioned you're not considering this one of your fighting knives, but no. this is more go-to utility knife. Okay. W when I'm in civilian clothes, it's, that's always on me. The, the way he's got the, the handle wrapped with the 550 cord, guys, it really gives you a nice purchase on it. It looks pretty the way it's done. Um, who makes this one again? CRKT. All right, now you notice what he did, guys. Uh, he took off the belt clip that came with it, and he just, he just ran a zip tie through it. And you just run your belt through this. Yep. Inside your belt, outside your pants. Yep. 
Yeah, it would it would be just if you can see this part. I'm not gonna. It goes through here and then get attached, so it's being held to you like this. And you, you put it over here, right, on your off side. to the side. Okay. All right. Um, why a fixed blade over a folder? I know the I know the answer to that, but for our people in TV land, when it's an emergency, I don't need to be flipping anything out, and I don't need a weak point even though these are very strong and good knives they all have a pivot weak point right. fixed blades don't have that and if i need an emergency to get it quick all i have to do is pull it i don't have to worry about flicking it out yeah i i've i've been running the um spider co emerson wave uh the spider co is a great knife uh the emerson wave is your uh, your cut up here he actually patented it uh, but that hook catches on the edge of your pocket and as you're pulling it out it opens works great you see i literally when i'm in a suit i'll have one on either side i one in every two three hundred times it won't open it lock open the whole way it'll stop like that um that's not locked guys and if you go to cut that would be bad so uh one in 200 doesn't sound like a bad average, but understand taking second place in a knife fight is not where you want to be. So yeah, fixed blade knife, way to go. I see you got one more over there. If when we're traveling like I traveled with you, what you don't see is I always have my shirt over it. This is behind me and it's a push blade and it's fast. So I'll be using both these two knives to fight with, but this is what they'll see. And so, it is easy to control. It isn't going to slip into my hand, and it fits sideways on my belt back behind me. So it sits, it sits in the small of your yeah. back and grab it. And okay. I can reach it quickly with my left hand. I understand, guys. That's called uh, punch knives are illegal in a lot of states. As with everything else, uh, so would this be. By the way, you walking down the street, understand that's going to draw attention, <laughs> all right? But uh, please understand. What he's giving you is he's given his opinions and his vast knowledge, but know your local uh, laws and restrictions. All right, good deal. All right, for hunting in survival mode, this is one of my very favorites, the way it fits in my hand, the way the blade is shaped. This is also a CRKT. This is my favorite skinny knife. So when I'm skinny... Uh, can it let, let them out, see it at oh. home. Is that a folding knife or fixed no, blade? No, it's fixed blade. Fixed blade. I don't, do, okay. I don't do that with folding blades. Okay. Now, the only... The only disadvantage is this is Carl, Carl's, when I went to skin to help him skin deer out this last year, he goes, wait, wait, Randy, man, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So he cut around this deer's neck, made a pocket around it, stuck a golf ball in there, tied a rope to the outside of it, hooked it to his truck and pulled, well, he had to cut the legs off. He pulled the whole hide off this deer in one fell swoop. Kind of like you would skin a, a squirrel. Why wouldn't it work on a... 200 pound squirrel. So anyways, we, we hang the deer up and we pull it off with a pickup truck. We're good. Why are you uh, bashing me? No, no. Bashing it was per but of my whole life, elk, deer, bear, I've been working with this bad <laughs> pup and in seconds, he takes the thing and pulls the whole hide off with the truck. Damn. It took uh, three, it, three and a half seconds to yeah, skin it a is deer. Just like my bow will throw him. <laughs> I hate this guy. When you see something that works, it's changed, is better than yours, may adapt to it, look at it, see if it works good for you. All right. Uh, one of my common switch out knives that I'll have on me uh, when I'm in the work mode is this one. It's also CRKT. It's one of my favorites. Columbia got, River Knife and Tool. Yep. It's got the jimping on there, so it stays there. It's got the a place where my a fingers guard, are, yep. can't go forward, but it's small. I get in and do minute work and stuff with it. That's what I like it for. Thin edge blades, guys, you can get them insanely sharp and uh, you can do real uh, fine work with it. Filleting fish, doing things like that, feathering, uh, fire sticks and everything. Yes. Okay. Uh, same thing, I use zip ties instead of the normal uh, clamps, right. belt clamps. All right. This one, I just haven't put the zip ties on. But like, taking the survival mode when I'm making tools or I'm making uh, traps or anything, yeah. this is uh, it's called the uh, Black Label by Browning okay. makes this. Okay, this is one of my favorite Let me see working tools. It fits your hand. The jimping's in there. It's very small, thin blade. So when I'm shaving and making stuff like arrows 
or I'm making uh, fire sticks, whatever. This is outstanding for that. Okay. Extremely sharp, controllable. I can do virtually a, a ton of different uh, work. This is a working survival tool with it. So if I knew I was going to be out, I would take this. It's fits in the hand. It's there. It's not going to slip anywhere, and I can do tons of work with it. It won't do everything I need. That's why you need some of the smaller blades. That's why you carry seven. Yep. All right, before we get into the monsters over here, I'm going to give uh, a slight break. You know YouTube's going to plug a commercial in anyways. Let's have them do it where we want them to do it. I'll see you guys back in a minute. All right, guys, we're back. I'm still here with Randy. He just covered all the small ones. Look at these monsters over <laughs> here. Now, uh, <coughs> these are not the pretty ones that I see on all the pretty commercials and stuff, uh, but these are your favorites. Yeah, You've got to have reasons. There's stories behind these. Where do you want to start, Randy? I'm going to start with, remember I told you you're going to look at your situation, you're going to adapt to it. Yeah. So if I needed to stay light, like my normal rucksack that I showed you is 18.7 pounds. Now, max I'll go out is 30, maybe 33 pounds, but all that stuff only weighed 18.7 pounds, right? So if I want to stay light and loose and not have a lot of uh, weight on me, then I'm going to change some of the gear I have that you see here. So to stay light, now chopping, this has got a small head on it. It's not really good. It will work, and yeah. it's sharp. But really what I have it for is for pounding. Okay. okay. If I needed to use something to pound and break stuff with. So to go with it, to make it something light, let's see the knife there on. Now, this is a black label. It's made by Browning. It's one of my favorites. I like it. It's got a good balance to it. It's got a thin blade, so you have to watch thin blades when you're doing I split wood with it and stuff like that. But it's not really thick. It's not really made to okay. do it. But it's good for chopping, cutting vines out of the way. The combination of these two, I can pound and I can chop with, and I can split if I need to. Now I've lightened my load. So these would be the two of the combos that I'd okay. use. All right? Now, if I want to, if let's say I'm in the jungle, um, I'm not here in South America and Asia, I probably are not going to need any of my larger cutting. So I might have this in my pack just so I have something to pound with. Okay. But this bad boy right here, this Fox Pathfinder. Pathfinder Fox. Look at that monster right there. Now, uh, soft rubber handle. Yes, and it's, if you look on it, it's got the swells onto it, all right? It's got the metal down here on the bottom, so you can, you can, you know, like break glass if you need yep. to, but pound and stuff. And it'll keep my hand from sliding forward because the way this is designed and the swell of it. Now, the thickness of it compared to that end one down there, not only can I split with it, but... Uh, Thickness-wise, if you want to compare yeah. them. And then the blade is even a lot thicker on it uh, when you look at it. But I, I'm going to, a lot of bushes, a lot of vines, a lot of grass, then this is what I'm going to use. And it'll cut through that like butter. Man, you, you pulled this out the other day. We were clearing stuff on the, the back of the range. And Randy said, I'm going to go get my machete. And I'm, I'm thinking old army machete, cheap piece of metal that you don't mind hitting rocks. That's the knife he pulls out. I'm like, that's not a knife. This is a knife. What? Are you? It, you know, but uh, it easily went through everything. Yes, it will. Uh, extremely good fighting if you had to fight with it. Um, it is a little bit large for stuff like that. But in a survival mode, it'll do a lot of stuff, but it's got a lot of weight to it. So you pick and choose. If, if I were in a jungle mode, I would carry this, even though it's heavier, because it'll do a tremendous amount of work with it. All right. All right. Um, now, one of the, uh, this other knife here, this is my, when I'm making trails, this is heavy dude. This is made in the United States. The end of it has been broke off because, uh, you know your wire clamps that we used yesterday? Yeah, yesterday yeah, yeah. Uh, they were grown into the tree and I didn't see it and I needed to cut a limb off. This cut clear through that and the cable, which I didn't know was there. You got all that mass of metal at it, the end And it there. chipped it out mm. and I'm like, whoa! And then I looked what it did. It went clear through the middle. This is bad, but it's heavy, right? It's, I, I use this in conjunction with this 
right here when I'm going in and I'm clearing stuff out of the way. Both of them are heavy duty. If I find something that this won't, um, gives me too much resistance to, and set that down, then I'm gonna get this bad pup. Who makes this one, Randy? Um, how do you pronounce that? So the Made in United States, El Chetty. El Chetty. Yeah. It's made in the United States. So it's States. like a machete, but a uh, Spanish version. Yes, but it's made in the United States. It's badass. If it can cut through metal and only <laughs> chip that one part off. <laughs> I wish you guys could feel how heavy that thing. <laughs> wow, that, that's a monster right there. With that I one, like it's also got the, the dimple right there yep. for a, a bow drill for fire yep. building on both sides of the handle. Yes, it does, and I'm sorry I didn't point that out, but this is my on my work version okay. when I'm clearing stuff. And then this is the one I'll carry with it. Now this is, this thing just looks ghetto. I gotta tell you, look at this. I mean, it's all taped up, it's <laughs> crappy. Obviously the handle's half broke underneath. Nada. No. This, you have added all this stuff for good reason. Yeah. Uh, tell me why you took this beautiful uh, prop out of some old Viking movie <laughs> and made it look this ghetto. What, what modifications have you made? To talk, tell us about the blade first. Okay, the blade is what they call a bearded blade. The advantages is two things. The, if you can see the thickness of it, okay, it isn't going to break or bend. If you sh pick up that knife, I was doing um, knots, cutting knots, and that's probably one of the hardest woods you can do. This is the thin cutting blade, cuts through stuff like butter, but it bent the end of the blades here. Mm -hmm. Not going to do that with this. Something I learned, use the tool that will work the best on it. So I got this. So not only will it chop through anything I want and not damage it, but let's say you said, Randy, you can only have one of these, of these tools here. You can only yeah. have one. I would almost always pick one of my knives. But since I got this, I haven't just described this, I would pick this. Not only can I chop, not only can I pound with, which I can't do with those, but now I can come in and I can do fine work because I can By bring my hand. By bringing your hand yep. that far up inside the blade. You see how he's got his hand uh, uh, cinched way up there? So uh, it, it has multiple purposes to it. So I, I'm, I would probably have to go with this. Even though I grew up with knives and I love knives, I would use a combo. But if I had to take one, it would be this. All right, now tell them you, a simple wooden handle. Okay, okay, common on a lot of knives. What, why did you put these modifications okay. on? What are they? It looks like electrical tape. No, this is not This is actually leather. And then I used a shoe goo to put it on. Okay. Now, because it's wooden, and if it breaks, you can replace it out in the field, right? Yeah. But to keep it from breaking or splintering when I'm chopping stuff, I wrap the leather around it so it takes the punishment first. Okay. All right, that's why it's on there. They do make covers that come and over. And then you, you literally just shoe gooed yep. underneath, put the leather on, and then shoe gooed over the top right. to seal it. Okay, that's cool. And because I have such a large hand, this wasn't fitting me well, and I didn't need it to be slipping, getting slimy and slickening, so I... I tied this, it's not 550 cord, it'd be half the size of 550 cord, but it's a cord. Tied it on, uh, got it nice and tight on there. Then I put shoe goo on it so it won't come back off. So now it fits my hand and that's the balance point. When I figured out where I needed to chop with, I put it on that balance okay. point for me and that's why it's there, okay? So when I need to chop, that's my balance point for it. That's just badass. I mean, guys, it, it looks rough, it, right? Shouldn't we have something new, something pretty, something yeah. that's uh, right out of the latest magazines? I, I, that's cool. That's very, very cool. All right, I'll dig that. You got one left here. Real quick, though, who makes this? Uh, I CRKT. Would call this, who? CRKT. Really? Yeah. Columbia River Knife and Tool, guys. Obviously, Randy's uh, a big fan of that company. Yes. Uh, Columbia River Knife and Tool. You know why I like them? Because initial invasion of Afghanistan, literally towers fell, we, we packed up our stuff, we went straight to Afghanistan. A big box just showed up literally from them. They didn't want nothing, they didn't want no advertisement. They're like, hey, we just, we'll make sure you guys got knives. And uh, I think everybody got two or three different knives and uh, I still got them kicking around, I do. They're, they're good knives, they really are. And uh, that's a patriotic company. Huh? Really is. All right, uh, Columbia, Col Columbia River Knife and Tool. Yep. All right, last one. Okay, this one I wouldn't necessarily carry on my belt, but you could. 
So when we're talking about a tool that you can do a lot of work with it, but you can drop the weight down, I found this. And this is new. I can tell this is new. This yeah. is your new uh, favorite. Uh, this is made by uh, Fisker. So it has a splitting head on it. You can see on here where it tapers backward if you want yeah. to split if, on it. If you if you'll oh, notice you from the front and camera, uh, it's an, it's very very thick right here. It's actually bowed out, and that is actually help you split those uh, split that wood. It's not so much for chopping when you hear them refer to it like that, right? Um, all right, keep going, Randy. All right, so you can chop with it. So if I needed to fall trees with it, it will do it. If I need to split wood with it, it'll do it. Right? I need to do um, cut firewood, it'll do it. What they did to protect it, like I put this leather, leather. here, yep. they made this plastic part here, or, or this nylon part, so it's okay. not gonna break. So the wood starts here, but you're, when you're splitting wood and doing stuff, it never touches the wooden handle. So you couldn't replace this wooden handle in the field? Is that, I'm just asking. Uh, I, I, I would figure out a way to do that. I, I have no doubt. But because they put this on here, the chances of me breaking that so, are not going to be yeah, very good because okay. uh, you can't have a huge swing with yeah. it because it's smaller. But and I can. You, you fall can definitely hammer with that. Look at yes. that hammerhead. That thing's impressive. I can fall trees. There's a ton of work. So this would actually go on my rucksack is where I'd carry okay. this. And the amount of work I can do this uh, with the saw is incredible. All right, and that's why I chose this uh, because it is a perfect weight and size do a tremendous amount of work without getting oversized and overweight. Who makes this one again? Uh, Fiskers makes that one. And anything else you forgot to mention on these? No, these are just my, my normal working tools that I work with almost all the time. Like I said, if you want to see some really specialized, outstanding mm -hmm. knives, those will be on my gun belt. Guys, um, Randy is sincere. I know, I'm sorry he doesn't have the latest and greatest off the internet or off of, uh, off of Instagram and Facebook and that all the other uh, channels say is the best knife on the planet. Uh, sincerely, I, when we go do things, Randy shows up to go kayak and shows up to go clear brush on the range, whatever. Randy shows up with these things hanging off his belt. I haven't seen you use this one too much. I'm, I just I'm got that. I know. I'm, it's my I can baby. tell this is your new baby. But he shows up with his Viking axe and all these other uh, just crazy <laughs> implements of destruction. And uh, dude, I've gotten a lot out of this. I hope you guys have too. Randy, thank you for those cool. pearls of wisdom. You guys know the deal. If you've got questions for Randy, I read all your comments. Put them in the comment section below. And uh, if there are any good questions, I'll pass them on to Randy. And if they're uh, bad comments, I'll invite you to go away forever. No big deal. I want to give a shout out again to our sponsor. And uh, I want to give a big thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon. Uh, we couldn't keep these, these great uh, videos coming for free without all the support of our patrons. We'll see you guys next time. Y'all take care and shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.